What's up bakers, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I wanna show you how to make 100% whole wheat sourdough bread. It's hearty, healthy, and absolutely delicious. We're gonna mix, shape, and bake this bread. Now let's get started and bake this bread. All right, we're back in the kitchen with our whole wheat flour. Freshly milled, oh, look at that. And we're gonna mix the Levin for 100% whole wheat sourdough. Now, in front of me, I've got a couple containers, some water that I've temped to 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, it's a little cold right now, so I'm using a bit warmer water. And my Levin, which is ready to go. So this starter was last fed last night and just allowed to rise slowly overnight. For this dough, we're gonna use a stiff Levin, meaning more uh, flour than water. And I'm gonna start, I actually printed off my little Excel here. I'm making eight loaves of bread and I will need 212 grams of Levin. So I love printing off these sheets. It kind of helps me stay organized and lets me know exact quantities. I need 212 here. We're gonna use 106 grams of water. And finally, 163 grams of whole wheat flour. Now this flour is very fresh, just milled, and it is going to ferment quickly. It also has a really great aroma, and it feels nice. You can feel the oils in the flour, it's just beautiful. I love working with fresh flour. It makes all the difference in the flavor of the bread to me. So I've got everything in here. I'm just gonna mix this up, and then we're gonna transfer it to another container just so we can have it in a better size, and we will let that rise. So let's get started here. All right, so you're gonna get in there and just mix this up. Now you're gonna have to probably get in here with your hands to get it, because it's quite a stiff little dough. But I like to start with the spatula in the container just to save any kind of mess. And then we're gonna use a wet hand like this. And I'm just gonna try and incorporate all the Levin into it. I'm gonna use a dough scraper, scrape down the sides, scrape off the bottom. There we go, get a little bit on my apron there. And just give this a really solid mix. Make sure that there's no streaks of starter in there. That's what I always see is those little streaks of starter. So you can see that's a very like nice mix there. And I put a little bit of water on my scraper, bring this back into a ball. And with a little bit of water on your hands should make this pretty easy. I can sort of pick this thing up, look. I can kind of work it into a little ball and that's about it. So we're gonna stick this in the container. I actually am gonna use this thing right here because it kind of seems to be the perfect size. I'm gonna just round this off into a little ball and plop that in the middle. Now this is going to, ooh, it's a bit tight in there but we're gonna go for it anyways. This is going to fill this container for sure and probably once it kind of hits the top, it's about here right now, so once it hits the top, it'll be about triple, and that's gonna take about three to three and a half hours. So I'm gonna put a lid on this, and we're going to stick it in the proofer, then I'm gonna get washed up, set my timer for three and a half hours, and I will see you in a little bit. So we're about halfway through the Levin building process. We have about two hours left on it. And we're gonna start the auto lease process now. For 100% whole wheat sourdough, I usually go sort of 90 to 120 minutes of auto lease. Um, I've already weighed out the ingredients and I'll leave that in the description below. Uh, for today, I'm gonna be making a recipe that makes eight loaves of bread. I've also already weighed out the salt and I'm just gonna place that up here so I don't forget it later. So I put the water in, but I've held back about 15% of the water. Now I don't actually measure it, but I've got it here so I can add. And then I keep a pitcher with a bit of water and a dough scraper so that I can scrape down the machine as we go. I'm gonna start it on first speed. So we can get in here with a wet scraper, just give the sides a scrape a bit. Make sure we're getting everything in there. Now at this point, I like to just drizzle a bit of water down the sides and help pull that 
all the dry bits off the bottom. I'm gonna increase the RPM a little bit just to get it mixing a bit faster, but I wanna start it on slow and gradually work up instead of just ramping it right up. Gonna add a little bit more water. Again, we'll scrape down the sides of the bowl. Get everything in there. You can see, oh yeah, looks good. We don't want any dry bits. So depending on your mixer, like mine for example, I've got a little bit of dry flour just in the corner there. So that's kind of why I scrape it down as I go. Now this 100% whole wheat dough is gonna take a lot of water, but depending on your flour, you might change that a little bit. I'm going really high hydration. This is a 13.4% protein hard red spring. Depending on your milling, your grain, you might be able, you might change that a little bit. So just keep a watchful eye on it. At this point, all we're trying to do is mix in all the dry bits. So we're gonna take a look here with wet hands. I can pull off a piece. Now you're not gonna see a lot of gluten development here. So you can see it's kind of like pulls apart really easily, but that's okay. As this sits in the mixer and has a chance to relax, it's gonna develop stronger gluten. We're also gonna mix this again with our pre-ferment. So that's it. Take your scraper one last time. Just make sure your sides are scraped down if you have to. Some mixers, you might need to move the dough just to make sure the bottom is all picked off, which it is. Um, I'm gonna cover this. I'm just gonna use a towel. And I'm gonna let this sit until my Levin is ready to mix in. So I'll see you in about 90 minutes. Dough's auto leaves, it's time to mix in our Levin. So let's check out our dough in the mixer first and then we'll check out our Levin. So this has been about 90 minutes. You can see if I just take a little piece of this, I can stretch this out much better than what we had before. Now I'm gonna grab my Levin. I kind of let this one go wild. You can see it's like filled the container and it smells quite strong. I, so I built this, I built this Levin so that it, I'm using everything. So I'm just gonna dump this right into the mixer. You could measure it out if you were doing extras, but I know this is exactly enough for this recipe. So we're just gonna throw this in there. And then I'll usually put a bit of the water in here just to get everything out and eliminate waste kind of thing. I'll put this back in here just so I don't forget. And now we're gonna close this and we're gonna start to mix. So this is gonna take about 15 minutes. So what I'll do is I'll set a timer for 15, the total mixing time. So let's start the mix now. We're gonna turn this on and we're just gonna let that mix in. So usually when I start, I'll add a little bit of the water so that we're sort of using the water as we go through the mix. And I've got this mixer at, uh, this mixer doesn't have speed one, two, three, it's only got RPMs. So I've actually got the mixer at 125 RPM right now. Uh, so you can kind of see right in the mixer now, it's pretty stiff dough so far. So I'm gonna add a little bit more water. And the way I can tell that is just the way it looks in the mixer. It's already got those ridges, those pumpkining effect to it. And let's just let this go, let's let it rip. When I look in there, I can see by the way it's pumpkining and ridging that this can take more water. So we're gonna go a little bit more. Now keep in mind this flour was fresh, fresh, just milled. So it's going to really take the water. At about five minutes, we're gonna mix in the salt and I'm gonna use the remainder of the water to mix that in. So we're gonna mix in the salt now. And let's keep the mix going. If you're just starting out, you might wanna start with 50% whole wheat sourdough. I've actually just baked some. I've got a full length video on how to make this as well. It's 50% whole wheat. It's a little bit uh, more forgiving. It's a little bit easier, uh, but it's an awesome bread. And so I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. I'm gonna turn up the speed on the mixer a little bit. And we're gonna add a little bit more water. We're gonna let this mix on high for another six minutes. You can see the stages as it goes, it gets a bit stronger. The dough starts to pop off the hook, the splitter bar. If you're making this in a planetary mixer, you're gonna notice the sounds changing. Planetary is, planetary is like this, where the hook's just in the middle. You're gonna notice the sound of the dough slapping against the sides. Um, but here, yeah, we'll, look, we'll take a look at this B-roll. The, the dough kind of snaps off the hook here. Pop, pop, pop. 
And you can also see the ridges in the dough. If you look all the way down, it sort of has this pumpkining effect. And then finally, if you look at the very bottom here, it's pulled away from the sides of the mixer. Now, if I go like this, this dough should come up in one piece, which it does. And you're gonna see now when I start the mixer back up again, that it pulls away from the sides of the mixer in here. Now, eventually it'll start to pull into the middle or it'll do that if you're using a much drier dough. We're gonna let this mix for another two minutes and then we'll take a look. All right, our time is almost up. We're gonna take a look at this dough. I'm pretty confident it's ready to come out. Let's see. 30 seconds left, but we're gonna stop it. So with a little bit of water on your hands, you're gonna take the dough and pinch off sort of an apricot size, okay? Then with a little bit of water on your hands, you can start to stretch out this dough to see the window. I've got a full uh, description on how to make this recipe on my blog now. I may have changed the mixing times a little bit because my baking is constantly evolving, but you can see there's a pretty nice window for a whole grain right there. It just starts to break around the sides, which is totally fine because we're gonna do two folds on this dough. So we're gonna take it out of the mixer and I'll show you how to do that right now. All right, let's take our dough out of the mixer. So we're gonna need a container. I'm using this little Cambro. Got a little bit of grapeseed oil and some water. I'm just gonna lightly oil the bin. Now you can also just put the oil and water in a spray bottle. Uh, that works really well, but we use the spray bottle for other stuff in my house so I don't put oil in it. So I've lightly oiled it. There's nothing dripping and I'm gonna spray this out. And it's gonna sort of make like a layer with the water and oil so that the dough doesn't stick. I'll reuse this later for my cast iron. So to get the dough out of the mixer, I'm gonna wet my hand and I'm gonna sort of pinch it off and pull it out and throw it in here. So you can put your wet hands in here, reach all the way through, pinch through the dough like that so you're not tearing it and do it on both sides, pull it out. All right, so once you have the dough in the bin, we're just gonna pull this dough together. With wet hands, I'm just gonna sort of fold it over on itself and press it into my bin. You can see it's actually pretty full in here, so I might need to switch that to a larger bin, but because I already have it in here, I'm gonna leave it and hope that it's enough. Put a lid on it. Gonna set a timer for 60 minutes, and we'll fold this in 60 minutes. In the meantime, let's clean the mixer. I almost forgot to take the temperature, very important. Uh, super key to managing your fermentation. So we're gonna take this and I'm at 29.5, which is a little bit warm, but it's kind of cold in my house. So I'm gonna leave it and it'll come down during that fermentation. Our dough has been fermenting for one hour. Our total bulk is gonna be about three to three and a half hours. And we're gonna give the dough its first fold. You can see it's nice and light now. It's risen, looks great. So we're gonna put some water on our hands. I'll put a little bit on top, go underneath the dough, give it a good stretch up. Oh, I tore it a little bit, don't do that. And just fold the dough over itself. At the end, you're gonna pick it up. It should all come clean from the bin and just press that back into the bin. That's it. We're gonna cover this and let it rise for another hour before we do our second fold. Well, and I'll see you in an hour. Two hours into our bulk fermentation, it's time to give another fold. Now take a look at the dough. So you can see that it's rounded on the side still. It is whole wheat, so you don't see those epic bubbles, but if you look closely, you can see the bubbling all over the dough. Now we're gonna give this a coil fold, so we're just gonna lift the dough up and put it under. I'm gonna use my sort of hip to position my bin. We're gonna put a little bit of water on top, and I'm gonna, with my hands underneath, just pull the dough up and allow it to stretch and fold it back over. So we're kind of just like, we're still developing tension without as aggressive of a fold because this dough is quite delicate. You can feel it's full of air. Oh, this is gonna be a great bread. So I'm gonna pick this up now and I'm gonna turn it in the bin. I like to turn it so that the gluten can relax the opposite way. You fold it one way, it relaxes the other. And in the long run, we're gonna create a much stronger gluten network, which is really important. So this total bulk fermentation is gonna be about three to three and a half hours. Now, just based on my dough temperature, 
which is still on the warmer side. We're at 27.5. If you remember when we mixed it, we were at, I believe, 29.5. Now this is gonna come down a little bit, but I'm gonna end up shaping this in about three hours. So we're gonna give this one more hour and then we'll divide and shape. So don't forget to set your timer. And I'll see you in an hour. Okay, we're back. It has been three hours and 15 minutes. It went a little bit longer than I would have left it. Usually I would do about three hours. You can see that it looks beautiful. It's like, curved on the sides, look at the dough, it wiggles, it's very healthy. So we're gonna get this out of the Cambro and we're gonna pre-shape it. Just throw this up there. My little scraper and a scale. We're gonna dump the dough out onto the table. So I'm just gonna push it forward. It should come out in one piece like that. Notice I didn't even need to get my hands. You can see the bin is pretty clean. Um, and that's a sign of a really strong, well-developed dough. Uh, this thing, I'll wipe it out after. So I'm just gonna put this aside. <clears throat> now we're gonna start to divide the dough. So I'm gonna start by going down the middle. And this is eight loaves of bread. So we're just gonna kinda push the dough away from the main piece here and have two pieces. It's much easier to shape a little corner like that. And I'm looking for 900 grams. Now, if you've made uh, regular sourdough before, keep in mind you're gonna have a little bit less volume because this is 100% whole grain and you typically won't get the same volume as you get with white flour. So here we've got two, there's three. I'm not too particular about the weights. If I'm a little bit over, under, I'll usually just go with it. Uh, that one is a little bit too under, so we'll add a piece here. So these last couple have been about 870, uh, which is a little on the smaller side, but I might actually make a little tiny loaf out of this for my daughter. So if I have a little bit of dough left over, no problem. Okay. Uh -uh. One thing to keep in mind here is if your dough stands up the way this does, it's really good. You want it to hold its shape when you kind of cut it and divide it. That's called a shelf, or I like to call it the baker's shelf. And then we've got our eighth loaf here. I'm gonna have a little tiny left over. Perfect. You know, we'll move the scale out of the way. And now with your dough scraper, we're gonna stretch the dough on the table into a nice, tight ball. Now we're gonna degas this a little bit, which is okay for this dough, because if there's too much air in it, it will not be able to hold when you bake it and you'll end up with a flat loaf. So I actually go pretty strong on the pre-shape here. Okay, once you pre-shaped everything, we're gonna set a timer for 30 minutes and I'll see you in 30 minutes for the final shaping. Next, we're gonna dust our banatones, get these in the banatone and get them in the fridge overnight. So we're gonna use a couple of these and then I'm gonna use a couple of these ones here. Whoops. Now we'll put the tiny one in there. So I'm just dusting these with rice flour and I'll put a little bit of whole wheat in there as well. But these banatones are pretty well seasoned or used so they're not gonna stick very much. We'll just give it a little dusting like that. Then we're just gonna pick the loaves up and place them into our banatone. Okay. And if you don't have a seal, a seam, try to make sure there's a seam on the bottom. My first one did not there. So I'm just gonna lightly press these and flip them over. A little tiny loaf for my daughter. We're gonna put it in here and see how it turns out tomorrow. And that's it. So I'm gonna get a bag on these and we're gonna put these in the fridge right away. I don't like to give these any floor time because I find they proof really quickly. So I'm gonna wrap them right into the fridge and then tomorrow we'll pull them out half an hour before we bake them. And I'll see you in the morning. Time to score our 100% whole wheat sourdough. You can see here, I've already baked the first four. They look awesome. We've got a nice ear on these ones. These two opened up right down the middle. They're just beautiful. It is 
something to watch for sometimes when you're baking 100% whole wheat. You look at the bread like this, it looks fully proofed and risen. Then when you score it, the final product kind of deflates. So what I like to do is bake them almost right out of the fridge. These have had about a half an hour of floor time. I'm gonna just flip this into the pan, nice and gently. And then with our blade on an angle, score the loaf of bread. I'm gonna put the Dutch oven lid back on and spray just a bit of water into it. There's about 10 sprays. We're gonna throw this in the oven and we'll check it out in a few moments. Last 200% whole wheat sourdoughs are out of the oven. They look awesome. Check it out. Beautiful color. Smell is amazing. Now this is a particularly difficult bread to make, so give it a few tries. If you're really stuck, go back and check out my 50% whole wheat sourdough. I'll leave a link to that below. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, I'm gonna be doing lots of demonstrational videos. Once we get our little oven in the garage, you're gonna wanna check out all the awesome stuff we do. So subscribe, like, follow the channel. Let's see what this is all about inside. Woo, yeah, look at that, beautiful bread. This smells awesome, super hearty. Grilled cheese sandwiches, here we go. So I'm gonna go eat some of this. I got some butter over here and I will check you in the next video. Thank you for watching.